This is Foodie Call on the G1 Podcast. All right, greetings everyone. James E. Wendy City Pizza. What's up? I am GP, and we are the regular co-hosts of a Foodie Call. We're given uh, Thomas and Chuck the day off they're probably off on a mandate or something somewhere (laughs) uh this is foodie call and do on podcast and if you're tuning in right now uh, through youtube you'll have noticed two very special individuals seated right next to me Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce ray o ray is um a consultant he's a bartender he's crafted menus over at uh, brickyard manimal uh, the bistro and home day right so he's definitely behind the scenes in the bar scene here in Korea. Ray, why don't you say hi? Hi, how are you guys doing? Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, sir. Ray's also a personal friend. Last time I saw him, a uh, quick side note, we I was in a sriracha costume. You were dressed as a cholo. Yes, I was, yes. All right. You are from LA? I am from LA. You know, it's a part of me, so I decided to <laughs> represent LA in the best way possible. The Hispanic gangster <laughs> part. Um, I got way too plastered and I went home super early. I remember you were dis- a bit disappointed. Um, yeah, I got nothing else to say about that. That was a bad... Uh, Halloween was not so great for me in 2015. Uh, Ray, the person next to you, I understand, is in, has been influential on you personally. Why don't you go ahead and introduce us to him? Sure, sure. So, you know, for me, uh, Etuan is kind of the community that I've always been hung around at. And in terms of cocktails, the first person that I think of when it comes to cocktails uh, is the gentleman sitting next to me. I, I discovered his lounge about a, about two years ago. And this is this is it. This, this is the lounge that we're at right now. Yeah, yeah we uh, are recording live from Twelve Stairs in Itaewon. It's a uh, kind of between the McDonald's and the station on the the back alley side. But yeah, please continue. Yeah, but so I I, I met the owner and, and and the how I met the owner is actually a funny story. So we'll get into that later. But uh, I just developed this really great friendship with him, and I really consider him a role model because he is this uh, legend. Uh, that for me personally, I think he's a legend because he is a uh, Korean born, uh, did a little bit of uh, study in the States and he brought this uh, bar technique back and he has this amazing lounge. But uh, his name is, uh, to me, he's Bat Hyung, but to, you know, the Koreans it's Kyung Sup or um, Kyung. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, please. Hey guys. <laughs> Kyung, thank you, Ray. Thank you very much. So if you haven't pieced together, we are talking about drinks. You knew we would make our way to it eventually here on Foodie Call. But uh, not just any drinks. We're talking specifically about the cocktail scene here. And we have two very special individuals uh, to do that. Me, I think me and James. James, you seem like a, a little bit more of a classier drinker than I. Would you agree with that statement? Um, I don't know if it's a classier drinker. I just know that I've only started drinking recently and I don't drink that much. So, so what I do, do drink, drink, yes, right? I'd like it to be fairly decent. I um, am far less selective. Uh, but I do have a preference for whiskey myself. Ray, what are your uh, what are your go to drinks? That's the question that every uh, bartender probably gets all the time. But for me, uh, it's Jameson. I drink Jameson, just straight Jameson. Uh, you know, it's straight. I'm a straightforward kid. That's why. You know, um, <laughs> Jameson on the rocks. But you know, I don't really you know tend. Uh, it really depends on my mood. But uh, my go to thing really is Jameson. I don't go for the rich stuff. I don't go for the cheap stuff. Right in the middle. That's Jameson. That's not a very cholo selection. Uh, Gyung, I want to know what your favorite drink or cocktail is. Actually, um, Ray is going to be doing some translating, if need be, just so that we can get a fuller dimension of all of uh, Gyung's expertise and everything like that. So um, if that's necessary, Ray will be translating from Korean to English. But uh, Gyung, I'm sure you can tell me in English what your favorite cocktail is, right? Gin tonic. Uh, what, what type of um, gin do you use? Uh, usually Tanqueray Tan. Tanqueray Tan. And I know with Hendrix, it's always with cucumber, but with Tanqueray, what is it with? Uh, I don't like with any kind of garnish. Oh, Just okay. gin and tonic. All right. He's a purist. Um, yeah, any type of whiskey on the rocks generally for me, or neat, or actually old-fashioned, so I enjoy those. Okay, let's um, let's start on a macro level. Let's start with how the cocktail scene, because everything in Itaewon, everything in Seoul changes, in Korea changes so, so rapidly. This neighborhood five years ago does not have the re- the reputation it has now. It's a much classier place. People come here on dates. It's impossible to walk through Gyeonggi-dan on a day with sunny weather and not just be bombarded with people 
and uh, couples and things like that not that there's anything wrong with that it just makes my walk to the gym a little bit more annoying but um the cocktail scene must have changed a lot and that fed into the overall soul scene right so let's talk to someone who's been here a long time uh young what was the cocktail scene the drinking scene like um when you started drinking when i start the bartender cocktail scenes are very small little over than 20 drinks like june bar long island i still like classy one that time that cocktail is enough for everybody when i was start the the bar scene but now changed a lot in uh in what ways has it changed the so june bugs and uh things like jack cokes are very basic they're on everyone's house menu every single bar right how has that changed first we have many different kind of alcohol now yeah i see it, you're looking at your own bar here back behind the cameras what you don't see is the rows and rows of whiskeys everywhere moonshine everything is available the 10 years ago that's maybe quarter of them that's all i had so we have a lot now that which means of course change a lot we have many choice so where are these people learning about these type of drinks do you think tv show travel they have experience from that oh okay i gotta uh, mention too as well in terms of i think it, why it's changing too in terms of the amount of cocktails on the menu or the inventory is that uh, there's just a lot more imports coming into korea than there was before a lot of new more products coming in and so we have as a bartender we have more products to use and, and it expands our um extensive cocktail menu we can we can make more cocktails with it basically actually and uh, this uh, next thing i'm glad you mentioned the imports because um the imports i remember when i first came to korea i always celebrate moving houses with a new bottle of whiskey usually it's not very expensive but i remember noting how expensive johnny walker red label was when i first came to korea and i thought it was like wow this is absurd i would never pay this much and uh james you're also a a business owner actually do you ever need to buy alcohol for windy city pizza um not more than beer at this point okay um i, I was wondering like how does the how did these imports that are they're more expensive right for sure and and the thing about uh korea that uh, makes it difficult for the cocktail game here is because the imports uh, are slightly pricier than other countries and so because of that we have to price our drinks uh, at a little more uh, of an expensive price and that can really turn off a customer uh, or a foreigner for that matter where they're used to paying a certain amount for a certain cocktail back where the, they're from and they're going to be like why do i have to pay a couple extra dollars when i can get this back at home for this price so absolutely and uh, it seems like splitting hairs but the difference between a 12 dollar and a 14 dollar uh, cocktail is over 10 percent right and that means a lot especially because a cocktail isn't a basic necessity you know it's not a survival thing so a lot of people take that into account but these are more expensive right um how does that play a role into who comes to these bars because i noticed the difference here and i have my own uh, mental image of the people who come to a bar like 12 stairs um like uh, one of my favorites is Southside parlor i know you go to uh, mix and malt a lot i haven't had the pleasure of being there myself but these are a little bit more upscale, right? Sure. Yeah. So they're more expensive. How does that play a role into who actually comes into your bars? Early 20s to middle 30. They are most my customers. Okay. Do well, why, why do you think it's these people that come? I usually like early 20s. People don't have much money, in my opinion. At least what I noticed with bars like this, or it even started the same way with coffee, was that... You know, things that were slightly pricier back then were really driven by that female demographic. Like, they're the ones that are going to go out and they're more likely to use their disposable income on things like dining out at Italian or foreign restaurants. And recently, that sort of shifted into their drinking habits as well. They're more likely to drink wine. They're more likely to order cocktails. Um, and they're also more likely to drink craft beer these days. You know, more so than, let's say, the male demographic, which is really going out trying to get the most bang for their buck, going out for some gift style, drinking a lot of soju, and they don't really want to spend, at least from what I find, they don't really want to spend that same disposable income that way. Absolutely, and um, a lot of people are making more money nowadays, um, uh, especially 
women are making a lot more money in the workforce. They're becoming more independent. They have more in, um, disposable income. So that might be why we're seeing it. You are catering to this demand, Young, um, because you've you have an interest in it. And then you actually went to uh, Las Vegas. You lived there for a number of years, worked in the casino scene, done numerous competitions there. And that's how you got your experience, right? Yep. Uh, but how are other Korean bartenders receiving this education? Because uh, as people try more cocktails, they're going to know the difference between um, your Costco vodka or a nice or something like a, a Grey Goose, right? How, how are Koreans educating themselves to become better bartenders? Can I speak Korean? Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, 예전보다 지금은 이제 교육을 배울 수 있는 그런 컨텐츠가 굉장히 많아졌고요. 바텐더들이 그래서 자기들이 찾아서 어, 뭐, 유튜브나 인터넷에서 배우는 그런 경우가 많아졌고 그리고 또저 이제 세계적으로 칵테일이 점점 더 붐이 돼가고 있으니까 지금 한국의 바신에서 근무하는 분들도 그런 트렌드에 맞춰서 점점 더 공부하고 그런 게아이 직업의 프라이드구나 이런 걸 점씩 느끼고 있는 거죠. 예전에는 그냥 바에서 일하고 술만 주고 하면은 나는 바텐더다라고 얘기했던 사람들이 이제는 어 내가 교육이 되지 않으면은 바텐더가 아니구나 전문직이 아니구나. 하나의 직업으로서 말할 수가 없구나라는 거를 조금씩 느껴가고 있는 것 같아요. So what he's basically saying is is that uh, from from old days to now, uh, from the old days there just wasn't a lot of content. Uh, there wasn't uh, readable books or read, readily available for people to start learning. But now with with YouTube and, and such like that, uh, it's it's at their fingertips. They can start learning uh, about this craft of cocktails and. The second thing was he was mentioning was he uh, talked about uh, before it was just bartending wasn't really considered a serious thing you know it was just going out making cocktails but now people are taking pride in really learning uh, how to make cocktails properly and because this has become a booming trend uh, in Seoul people are actually actively trying to really study it and actually have pride in making good cocktails as opposed to just throwing cocktails. Just for you know, having a good time, or just the image of a bartender. So uh, that leads me into um, this next question here: this education, right? Education implies a level of sophistication and maturity. And I want to hear from everybody here. Um, this is a very you know a personal opinion based question. Do you think that the soul cocktail scene, not the drinking scene as a whole, because the drinking scene is comprised of Korean alcohols like soju and uh, makgeolli and um, my, one of my personal favorites, dongdongju, right? And then there's the craft beer scene, um, which we can also talk about, I guess. Uh, but more in terms of the cocktail scene, do you think it's as sophisticated as um, a place like uh, the United States? I know it's a high bar to set, especially um, it depends on which area of the United States. You know, I'm from San Francisco Bay Area. You're from L.A. Um, James, you're from Chicago. So... These are all very notable cities. But in your opinion, does Seoul stack up to those places? I would say that in uh, in San Francisco, it is marginally ahead of Seoul in terms of the cocktail scene, just for um, the number of good places there are to go. And uh, the, the level of creativity, I would say, is almost might might just be the same. I've seen a lot of great creativity at bars here. I mean, I, I completely agree. Uh, you know, I think with the cocktail scene in Korea, it's it's we're slowly catching up. You know, we we've been about a decade behind, if you like, and uh, you you start to see through baby steps that we're trying to get back to the global stage in terms of the level of cocktails in other world or in the other countries. But in terms of the baby steps that we're doing, you can see that through you know craft beer and you know that becoming a trend and, and now uh, elevated cocktails becoming a trend uh i i have to say that you know there are a few good uh bar programs here in seoul that can be compared to other countries uh, i think there are uh, some amazing creative uh, talents that are coming out uh, it's just again it's based on what we have available for us in korea compared to the other countries and yeah i think slowly we're getting there but again, we still have a lot of catching up to do for the rest of the countries. Kyung, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like Seoul's, I mean, you are part of 
pushing this maturity, right? And uh, that's why it's so great to talk to you. Um, do you feel like Seoul ha- is right up there, world class, or do you feel like it's significantly behind? 어떤 칵테일 종류는 충분히 수준급에 올라와 있다고 생각을 해요. 근데 다 그렇진 않고 어, 뭐 몇몇 좋은 바들은 충분히 뭐 월드 베스트 바에도 들어가고 또뭐 아시아 베스트 바에도 들어가고 했는데 그거는 사실 몇몇 군데고 전체적으로 봤을 때는 아직도 굉장히 많이 캐치업해야 된다고 생각을 해요. 아직은 걸음마 단계인 거 시작 단계인 것 같아요. So yes and no. I mean, there are some amazing places here in Seoul. There are some uh, world-class bartenders that have entered in competitions and and are are, are showcasing what Korea can do. But in, just in, in terms, of, I guess, a general sense, we still have a lot uh, to to catch up with and a lot to do. But there's seriously amount an amount of potential uh, that I think we can catch up on. I I like that. I, I like how genuine that answer seems you know not like full of pride you know, I, I don't know if i would be if someone asked me about my podcast and that i'd be like well I, i'm fantastic right but i have a huge ego uh james you're part of this podcast james um that's true what's your what's your take on uh how soul stacks up in terms of cocktails i think if you're talking about if you look at the very best of the bartenders here i think they compete very well let's say on an international stage but like those two gentlemen over there it said by and large um the average, let's just say, bar or the bartender in the bar, I, I think, uh, may not necessarily care as much about the drinks that they're putting out, and they may just be more focused on getting out a specific number of drinks um, versus, let's say, making quality drinks. But um, just same with, same, similar with food, you know, that's slowly changing. Like, mixology is slowly becoming a thing here to where bartenders are being more creative with the types of drinks they use and they use more techniques and um, and it's nice to see but it, it's a slow change I gotta say though in, like in, in the Itaewon area too I think it, within the last couple of years I think it has a lot to do with, with the food scene here and uh, it's created a buzz they kind of go hand in hand yeah, sure it, it's created a buzz for, for Koreans to come into this area looking for new things and new flavors and, and, and new items for them to try and so with the food scene becoming as big as it is within the past five years, it just, yeah, of course, cocktails are going to follow that because, you know, so people are trying to take pride in uh, taking pride in their cocktails. And so, you know, if you're eating good food, you might as well have a good cocktail with it, right? Absolutely. Um, I was wondering, how are Koreans taking to the cocktail scene? I mean, we, we've talked about who's coming here, right? Do you think that this is, um, it doesn't seem like a fad, by any means but it does seem like the growth is limited eventually like i just don't see um a grandma um, a grandmother coming into a place like this ever even a, a wealthier one right do you think that that growth is limited do you think that um this kind of culture is seen as foreign and only appeals to a very limited number of people well it goes back to something that uh we were discussing but it was basically Cocktails is kind of synonymous to having money in, in Korea. And so if you have money, you can enjoy cocktails. And so the majority of Koreans don't live the 1%. So they're... The more uh, majority of anyone. Right? More, yeah, exactly. I mean, the 1%. They're going to go for the straightforward, you know, bottle of soju that's a $1.50 in the stores just because that's just that's what's in their budget. And so, uh, uh, you know, getting the old harmony grandmother to enjoy cocktails, that's just not her nature too. And and she grew up this way and i think slowly that's starting to starting to change because as we had said before korea is a very trendy society so they're all about trends uh so will this trend start to lose its power in a, in a couple a year or less or a couple years you don't know korea is very strange that way you know uh, there's going to be definitely i think a following and a kind of a scene for it you know people that will continue to do that but will it hit the you know, will it be as equal as soju? That's a hard thing to say. <laughs> I don't think anything will ever be equal to soju. Um, but it doesn't have to be. You know, differences need to exist. And I was thinking, I'd, I'd definitely like to hear from uh, Gyung and you, Ray, about this. Since you both worked in the food and beverage industry in both countries, what are some big differences in the cocktail scene, the food and beverage scene um, between Korea and the United States that people like us, just the normal consumers, wouldn't 
be familiar with. Uh, right off the back, I can tell you, consumers like me benefit from not having to tip. So when a cocktail is a little bit more expensive, I don't, I don't care. I mean, it's the same as a tip, right? But nobody tips here in Korea. Uh, can you think of any other differences like that? Well, I, I think in terms of of the bar programs, the differences there's there's some major differences. Uh, for me, as a bar consultant, when I design cocktails, uh, I try to look at the market here and try to see what would actually be a good cocktail to a Korean and what would be a good cocktail to Americans. And I have this formula when I when I design cocktails in Korea, but I, I have a formula that it has to have flavor. I think nowadays Koreans love flavor. You know, before they like sweet cocktails, but nowadays with with the food trend being such a big thing, uh, they want flavor in their cocktails. So, can you can you uh, help define flavor? Like, do you mean like more nuances, using more bitters, things like that, or sure, you know, just going across the board of sweet and sour, and, and using ingredients like fresh ingredients like rosemary and citrus, and and things that are that have just a, a, a great amount of flavor to them that you can add to drinks, not just. Uh, just alcohols mixed together, but ad- adding components to it to add, to give balance and depth to a cocktail. I think that's something that Koreans uh, really do like. I don't think they like a lot of alcohol in their cocktails. They like more flavor compared to their alcohol, so the ratio is a little bit off uh, compared to the American scene, where the American scene likes you know like the, likes their, their lib- libations to be a little stronger. Uh, the second thing that I see is that you know if it's too out there, if it's too foreign. They're going to get scared by it. So using ingredients that they're uh, they're aware of, like rosemary and lemons and such like that, oh, they know what the rose, rosemary herb is. And so it doesn't scare them off too much. And so doing that in terms of the cocktails. And the third, obviously, for cranes, as trendy as they are, they love taking pictures. And I think that's across the, uh, <laughs> the board in the world. That's, yeah. But Korean girls love to take pictures. So it has to be pretty. It has to be beautifully visual. So that's the three things that I, I think about when I when I make cocktails, and that's a different a big difference between America and Korea. Um, I remember dropping by Southside Parlor because you uh, sent a picture on Facebook, and okay. uh, yeah. So James here is definitely guilty of that. Gyeong, are there any other differences that you want to add to uh, Ray's list? 한국이랑 미국이랑 칵테일 그 씬이 다른 문화가 다른 거는 일단은 한국 사람들은 음식을 먹으면서 same time they drink a hard drink. That's the big difference. So when they eat, they like to drink at the same time. They like to drink hard liquor when they drink. 뭐 예를 들어서 삼겹살에 소주. They already enough. 그래서 이제 2차로 바에 가는 그런 의미가 별로 없는 거죠. 어, 원래 나는 이제 저녁 식사를 하면서 충분히 취했으니까 내가 또 extra money를 바에 가서 써야 되느냐. 라는 거에서 그것도 어떻게 보면 뭐 머니 프라, 머니에 대한 문제인데 그게 많이 다른 것 같아요. 미국 사람들은 예를 들어서 뭐 저녁을 마시면서 버드카를 막 마신다든가 이러지는 않잖아요. 와인, 뭐 맥주 이 정도지 소프트하게 마시고 그리고 모질라니까 어 바에 더 가자 뭐이 정도인데 거기서 좀 많은 차이가 있는 것 같아요. So the major difference between what he sees in terms of the American and Korean consumers is that Korean consumers they love to eat and drink together, but when they drink, uh, while they eat, they drink pretty strong, hard liquor. Uh, and because of that, they don't want to go to another place after that. They don't want to go to a bar. They're pretty drunk to begin with. They probably stay at that spot or go to another spot and kind of keep that level of food and drink. But in terms of cocktails, it's not something that they would want to put more money in just because they're just already started the party, I guess, a little bit. And yeah, that, that's uh, the major difference is between American Koreans is that they, I guess they start strong. I just love the phrasing that uh, Gyeong used there. Chungbuni <laughs> chihasenika, he said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, um, actually, I'm going to pause at this next question. I'm going to go around the table, but first I'm going to preface it with you, James. James, what flavors in a cocktail are you partial to? Um, I don't really know. I'm sort of still feeling my way around that. Uh, I find that with cocktails, I like there to be, let's say, a fair amount of citrus in it, um, but I prefer it not to be sweet, right? So lemon and lime work really well. Um, And even things like basil, you know, things like that, those are fine, uh, just as long as it's not really sweet. So lemon, lime, uh, basil, not too much sweetness here. All right, now, that was kind of my trap here. We'll see how Korean you actually are. And 
we're gonna move over to Ray. Ray, what um, flavors would you say Koreans are partial to in 2016? And I want to see how in line James's preferences are with that. I, I gotta say, I think uh, James is a little bit of an Ajashi man because uh, <laughs> that's pretty much the similar things that Korean uh, gentlemen, all the older gentlemen, like to drink as well. Uh, but I think also it just has a lot to do with just the image thing again. You know, like before they want to be really masculine, so they don't want you know sweet. They want to look like men, so they're drinking scotch whiskey on the rocks, and they want strong flavors and. Um, you know, them drinking posh cocktails with their with their pinkies in the air is not something that they want to have the yeah, image I, of. I so, started drinking whiskey because I thought it was manly, personally. Yeah. So, so basically with that, the same thing, you know, citrus and, and, and those things. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the basil aspect, but, you know, again, that's something I think that's starting to change in terms of added flavor components. But, yeah, and it's, again, it's different with, with the women as, and as well. But um, don't get me wrong. There are some gentlemen here in Korea that do like a sweet cocktail. Uh, but it, I think it's, again, because they don't know what other cocktails that are available on this repertoire of, of uh, this expansive list of cocktails that are available. Gyeong, what, uh, what flavors do you find um, to be popular amongst Koreans? First, the sweet and not strong sweet and sour. Yeah, normally they like them. What's a, what's a good example cocktail of that? Uh, margarita. Great. I think the Korean girls, they, they, they like fresh refreshing the shiwan han yeah, yeah. They, they they want the it's kind of things like cucumber you know those those are kind of you just say korean girls want the cucumber y- yes <laughs> <laughs> the, well, like, well cucumbers uh yeah they, they get they it makes them happy <laughs> but cu- but no, but cucumbers it's, uh means something that's light light and refreshing so that you know cocktails such like mojitos and stuff like that they really like it because it's kind of sweet it's kind of tangy but it has the the soda in it it's kind of light and refreshing i uh, i am definitely partial to those too sure and the mojito scene in korea it's been like this huge thing and, and it really bothers me because what now i gotta hear this why why does it bother you well i mean there's two things mojitos in korea uh they're just not the ingredients available uh limes are expensive here so a lot of people kind of kind of dance around they skimp, that yeah uh and mints as well just those ingredients uh there's a lot of Koreans, because it's such a trend, they try to make variations on it, but without really understanding the mojito to begin with. So they'll have these weird concoctions. It's like same with martinis too. Yeah, seems like. and uh, the, you know, the, just a personal issue. You know, as a bartender, making a mojito is a pain in the ass, just because it's just the most labor-intensive cocktail. And so for us to make like ten of those in a row, it's it's, it's you get that nice forearm pump. Yeah, it does. We got to work out you know, for sure. Um, I'm glad you brought up uh, the cocktails because, you know, every bar has their version, you know, whether it's um, a, a really basic like sports bar, you're not going to expect anything too fancy, right? You're going to have your Jack Cokes, your June Bugs, um, things like that. Every bar has that basic drink. So it becomes hard to filter out um, what's worth trying when you know something's good, right? Like I, I don't have to have gone to mix and malt to know that all of my friends like it and won't stop talking about it right happy birthday wendell this was your shout out uh, by the way um so every bar has their version of this um, i was curious how do you ch- how do you guys choose a bar to try like how do you think oh this bar from the exterior or from the menu without actually ever having tried a cocktail there or being familiar with it through social media or friends how do you choose a bar um, that you think would be worthy of going to and for me, it's um, it comes down to the atmosphere the bar tries to display. So the first time I came into a bar like this, someone took me. But even if I uh, if I wasn't taken here and I actually saw it, um, which is it's impossible to see from the first floor, by the way. So um, just the the lighting was right, and the sheer number of bottles here made me confident that I could get a good cocktail here. Uh, James, how do you make that selection? Um, For me, it's mainly recommendation-based, just because I'm the least knowledgeable about anything as far as drinking goes. So um, I tend to drink just like single malts. And so if that's the case, then I'd like to be at a whiskey bar where the bartender is fairly knowledgeable. Um, He's actually able to give me a little bit of context about what I'm drinking and what the differences are. Um, Otherwise, if it's a function of cocktails, I'd like to have gotten a good recommendation from people that I know and trust that are like, hey... This place has a good bartender, you know, so this is where you can get decent drinks. And then I'll just leave it up to the bartender. I'll just go in and say, what am I drinking? 
and they'll just ask, well, what are you looking for? And then I'll name a couple of things and hopefully they're like, I got your drink. Yeah, I actually like to do that in my favorite places. I like to ask a bartender to make me something. And usually they'll just ask me how I'm feeling or whether I like one ingredient or not, and then they'll make something. But that takes a while to build up that trust, right? And I have that a few, with a few places now, so I'm pretty happy there. What about you, Ray? What um, gives you confidence in trying out a bar for the first time? And everything's different here in Korea, right? Sure. So you have to ju- adjust your standards appropriately. Well, I think just uh, the customers in general, and for me personally, you know, my mood changes. You know, if I want to go, to, it's the style of bar. Uh, that fits my mood you know if I want to go to a a sports bar where it's loud and you know there's you know it's packed you know the quality of cocktails is is a little less then I can do that but for me personally just in terms of what I I like personally I like the lounge where it's quiet you can have a conversation you can have some drinks uh, and sip on it not you know having shots and it's not Jaeger bombs and um, and not you know not knowing what blacking out and what not knowing what you what was in the rest of your system for the rest of the night but you know for me uh i think what i choose in terms of a good bar let's talk about you know 12 stairs for instance this is one of my favorite bars here uh i was uh, recommended this place uh, again because it's so secret right so when i walked into this place i just like the the mood of this place i call it disneyland i know it sounds a weird way that to is say. kind of a weird way to describe it but here yeah, sure. If you go to Disneyland, it, you know you, you disappear into another world, and and they shut off the exterior world. And I know this; these windows are expansive. You can see Seoul. When you're inside this place, it's like another another world. And when you sit down at this bar, uh, because uh, Bat Hyung here is such a good bartender, I think a good bar is you know again, that's what a bartender's job is. He's supposed to make cocktails. So if you don't know what cocktails are and you have you know preferences. You ask your bartender, and if he's a really good bartender, he'll hit it off the park just hitting those things that you want. And uh, he's amazing in terms of doing that. He really has an extensive knowledge, uh, and he knows how to make a really tasty cocktail. I certainly agree. Uh, Gyung, what uh, what gives you confidence in choosing a bar when you go out and you, you don't really know where you're going? Uh, first, I'm look the back bar, how many bottles you have, then... I'm look the front, what kind of making to you have. Then I look the eyes. The eyes of the bartender. I mean eyes. Oh, the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, the eyes. Okay, go. Yeah. Wh- why is that important? The most important ingredient is the eyes. The when co- when bartender making the cocktail, I don't like the from the the machine, uh, eyes from the machine. That's the around the zero temperature like that but they dilution fast yes so, yeah so they change really fast so which means they don't care about the cocktails so i'm just looked at the three things back bar and making tools and ice what um what is good ice oh really minus temperature around the minus 15 16 not wet really dry and big huge one yeah that's good ice okay that was a very good answer from just a bartender's perspective because i think ice is most one of the most underrated things that people don't think about but there's so many different styles of ice that you know fit your cocktail and a lot of bars don't do that so yeah i do agree yes that's a great answer ice is definitely a, a number one thing too well i know i know i've seen kyung in the past he'll take a big large block of ice and then he'll take the ice pick and then he'll just start chopping his own ice into like the big cubes yeah sure and yeah that's one thing i appreciate that he takes time he does definitely take the time to put some effort into the cocktail oh absolutely uh that's something that is very um lacking education not just here in seoul but everywhere i remember i went to a, a cafe and i ordered a vietnamese coffee uh you guys have had vietnamese coffee right mm-hmm. yeah it's uh, delicious yeah. yeah it's made with a kind of vietnamese style espresso and uh the condensed milk I went to a place and they gave me an ice ball, like a whiskey ball. Mm-hmm. And that is just not something you do because um, the intensity of a Vietnamese coffee, it it should be diluted down. I mean, I'm not, that's a preference, but it's given to you in a way that, you know what, if you wanted to take some ice out and you didn't want as much dilution, you could take that ice out. Mm-hmm. But if you have one ball, mm-hmm. you have no choice. Sure. And that it just doesn't melt. And so you just have this giant 
thing sitting around in your glass. And even then, the glass is wrong. You need a, a tall glass, right? I don't really sure. know what that's called. A Phil Collins. or Yeah, a Phil Collins. Yeah. Exactly. I wanted to ask you guys, as we're kind of approaching the end here, um, all, all these things are, are happening and changing in Seoul all the time. And it's brought us to this wonderful place where we are. Um, foreigners everywhere rejoicing happy that we have all the things all the comforts that we have back at home pretty much where is soul's cocktail scene headed in the future well i mean maybe a good question too would be at least from what i've noticed um like drinking is a fairly rough you know prevalent thing around here um but what i do notice at bars and it, it probably happens at other places too is it's not the amount of alcohol it's more what type of alcohol are people drinking at certain periods of time you know like Whiskey has really sort of come into its own recently. Let's say more of your mixology-based drinks employing like techniques like smoke or charring or those type of things have also become really popular sort of as of as of late. Like where do you see like the trend going? Or what do you say is on point right now? And what do you think may be on point later? That's sure. a great question. Uh, it's, it's a really, really difficult question, I guess, to answer too as well, just because the Korean market is so different in terms of it's constantly changing in terms of the trends. Uh, but again, yeah, you're right. I think it does uh, follow a lot of the Western uh, cocktail game. So it does follow a lot of the American trends as well. Uh, right now in 2016, I think gin is a big thing in the States. So uh, I think that, you know, it might follow that as well. Uh, but in terms of what you're talking about is in terms of techniques. Yeah, I think the number one thing for us, for me, uh, in terms of the future of, of the bar scene it really just needs to become out there more. People need to be more aware of it for that bar game to survive. And I think the how we do that is basically making the cocktails uh, more approachable, having them lower the price points, and educating uh, just the Korean market. And That's it, what I want to hear. Yeah, and educating the Korean market. If you educate the Korean market, I think then we have staying power in terms of a bar game here. So. Kyung? First of bartenders need to be changed. 그리고 뭐 좀더 좋은 교육을 알아서 찾아서 하고 배우고 자기 직업에 프라이드를 가져야 되고 그게 뭐 가장 변화되는 큰 키포인트고 그리고 두 번째는 제 생각에 예전에는 이런 술들이 되게 신기하고 한국 사람한테 어 이것도 먹어보고 저것도 먹어보고 재밌네 하는데 이제는 다 어느 정도 경험을 해봤기 때문에 지금부터가 진짜 변화되는 중요한 타이밍인 것 같아요. 지금부터가 바들끼리의 정말 어느 바가 잘하고 어느 바텐더가 잘하는 바텐더인지가 사, 이제 커스터머한테 심사받고 못하는 바들은 없어질 거고 잘하는 바들은 살아남고 그런 시기가 지금 된것 같아요. 그래서 지금 바를 뭐 가시는 분들 술을 마시러 가시는 분들한테는 되게 좋은 타이밍인 것 같아요. 예전에는 뭐저제 나이 또래나 저보다 더 형들이나 이런 사람들은 갔을 때 초이스가 없었어요. 그래서 뭐 그냥 주는 대로 먹고 했는데 이제부터가 진짜 한국만의 바를 그리고 그런 타, 스타일을 만들 수 있는 시기인 것 같고 앞으로 향후 한 2, 3년 안에 되게 많이 여태까지 발전했던 것보다 많은 많이 발전할 것 같아요. So what he's basically saying the first thing is that for the bartender himself here in Korea to start really being uh, well I guess proactive about really learning and, and trying to you know have pride in what they're doing and if, if they continue to do that and start learning and, and, and raising up their game that, that means really looking at the uh, cocktails outside of Korea and trying to bring that into, into the Korean scene uh, that's one thing the second thing he was talking about was how cocktails now in, in Korea have become this uh, well before it was were this new thing where they're they're going to a new world and so they're they're kind of enthralled by it but once once it becomes more of a just a regular thing part of their life that they are now more knowledgeable and more aware of what cocktails are they start weeding out the good bars the bad bars they start looking at you know what the bartender is doing and what a good bartender is and a bad bartender and so if they start making these uh, decisions they start to get a little more have more interest in, in the cocktail game but what he's saying in the next three four years if you continue doing that it's a great timing for us right now i think it's a great timing for korea for us to start doing this in the cocktail game and if we do that the next three four years it's going to be an amazing time for for korea for bar i'm i'm hoping to be around for it 
if you're hearing them in the background, uh, I believe that's the ice maker. Apologies for that, but that's part of uh, recording live in a bar. Um, a really fantastic bar, which is what we're going to be talking about as our last little point here. Um, big thank you to Young and 12 Stairs, obviously one of the best uh, bars that you can go to in Itaewon. But I want to ask you guys where your favorite places are to get whatever cocktail. So I'm going to go first, actually. Um, we've talked a little bit about um, how labor-intensive a mojito is, right? and how difficult it is to get it right, especially because of uh, the ingredients and whatnot. But I feel like the one place that uh, gets it really right, especially if you're into sweet drinks, is Bermuda. The, the exterior is yellow. It's got this kind of tropical vibe, and they have no end to the amount of uh, mojitos that they have. And I'm certainly a fan there. Even the more risky flavors like blueberry and uh, lychee, I thought they pulled it off very well. So my recommendation is... Uh, Go to Bermuda over in Itaewon. I'll put the link in the description below so you guys check it out. Um, James? Um, I mean, I've always really liked the drinks over at, here at 12 Stairs, if I'm perfectly honest. Well, you got a particular one that you want to suggest? Uh, I think their old fashions here are quite nice. Uh, I think the caipirinha that they make here is also very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, those are ones that I've really enjoyed here. Ray, let's uh, let's hear a non where we are right now suggestion. Sure, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of biased since you know I, I did release a couple menus at different places, so I can't name those places. But you know, those are really good cocktails right over there. But uh, and then and being your personal bartenders too, I actually kind of know, yeah, you know, um, our, our personal relationship of what your cocktail games are. Like. But for me, uh, I don't know. There there's some amazing places outside of the Etion area. Uh, I I like Southside Parlor. Of course, um, classic. Southside, well, Southside Parlor, the story goes with that is when I had started with Bistro, Southside Parlor and I, uh, and I, and Bistro, uh, we were both kind of kind of developing this whole unique approach to cocktails, and they really do a unique approach, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a very westernized approach, and I really appreciate that, that they're doing that. They are pioneers, I feel like, in this cocktail game as much as Tolstars is too, but uh, the different styles for sure. Um, uh, speaking of Southside's... Uh you know, style. I brought Koreans there, and they like they tell me this is like back when I was in college, back in the states or wherever. So that's um, something that I've definitely treasured about being there. You know, Gyeong, where uh, w- what kind of places do you have to recommend for us in terms of getting a good cocktail? What kind of cocktail and where to get it? Uh, if you want to drink like really classic cocktail, just I want to recommend Lupang. The name is Lupang. That's the in Cheongdam. If you like fancy or tropical tiki cocktails, uh, I will recommend Sato. Sato. Sato is right across from here near the fire station. Okay, mm. so that's a little bit further down in, in Taiwan. Right. Okay. Okay, well, then that'll be it. Thank you, as always, for joining us on Foodie Call on the G1 podcast. I'd like to thank today's guests, Ray O. Uh, thank you so much. It's, it was really a pleasure to uh, have this conversation with you guys. Absolutely. And Gyeong of 12 Stairs. Thank you so much. All right. Signing out. It's James. I'm GP, and we'll catch you again next time.